Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us for online worship and welcome to the Cathedral Church of St. Mark. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. 
He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest weed. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He sends out his command to the whole earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool, he scatters hoarfrost like ashes. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs, who can stand against his cold. He sends forth his Word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation, to them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah! The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him has life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. 
there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He was a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified, him and testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses' grace, and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is, only, it is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we hear the opening of John's Gospel. This poetic prologue is strikingly beautiful, cosmic in scale, and packed with substance. The book jumps immediately into claims about who Jesus is, starting with these weighty opening words, in the beginning. Deliberately using the first words of the book of Genesis, recalling the creation, John establishes that Christ's identity does not begin in Bethlehem. Long before the babe in the manger, at the beginning, before creation even, the Word was. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. You can hear the particular influence and echoes of this passage on the Nicene Creed, the formulation of the faith of the church, which we say every Sunday. Listen to this section of the Creed for parallels with John's prologue. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. The Word was in the beginning with God, eternally begotten, not made. The Word was God, of one being with the Father. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing was made. Through him all things were made. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. He became incarnate and was made man, truly human. And so there is a lot of connection between these two texts. And there is another one in the matter of belief itself. John writes that to those who received him who believed on his name, he gave power to become the children of God. Believed on his name, somewhat peculiar phrasing. What does it mean to believe on his name? Living in the 21st century, belief can be slippery. As modern people in a world that praises abstract, provable knowledge, it's easy to encounter the creed as a stumbling block. 
Even as Christians, it's not terribly difficult to develop something of an allergy to the entire concept of creeds and keep a polite, if frosty, distance. Given the modern tendency to approach the creed as a collection of more and less dubious propositional statements to which one must mentally assent, and then we call this faith, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that sort of creed myself. But I don't think that's the kind of belief that we're working with here, either in the creeds of the church or in the first chapter of John. Christian belief is primarily relational. We affirm a relational credo. It is the relationship, our real encounter with the living God, that sustains a life of faith. And it is a life of faith, because faith is to be lived, not just signed off on. Do you believe that ghosts exist? Do you believe that the earth circles the sun? Belief that has to do with facts, statements that we deem more and less provable, more and less probable. But in pre-modern usage, the English word believe always took a person as its direct object. Do you believe your mother? Do you believe your spouse? How about the neighbors across the way in your apartment complex? Do you believe them? When we say we believe in a particular person, we are expressing confidence, trust, and commitment. Much like we might tell a struggling friend or a sibling, I believe in you. We mean, I'm committed to you. I trust you. I'm with you. The word believe is also connected to the older word belove, as in what or who do you hold as beloved? Credo, the Latin for I believe, from which we get the word creed, shares a root with the word for heart. Where do we entrust our heart? Who has first place in your heart? That's who we believe in. Faith is not primarily propositional, belief that, but relational, belief in. The propositions come later as a secondary attempt to describe the living God, known first in personal encounter. In this sense, the creed is a guide passed on to us from our forebears in the faith. They said these words, and so do we. Though the infinite God just won't stay contained in any of our boxes, they have put up some trail markers for us to point the next generation toward that primary relational encounter with God. Over here, this way. Believing in God, believing on the name of Jesus, is first about trust. And so the real question is, is this God trustworthy? And how do we know? John tells us that we know God through what we know in Jesus. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. In the words of Johnny Cash, flesh and blood needs flesh and blood. And so God takes on flesh and blood in Jesus and comes to be with us, to make God known in a way we can comprehend. And what do we see? A God who is with us, who is committed to us, a light that is not put out in darkness, because in God there is no darkness at all. He is full of grace and truth. From abundant fullness he gives freely and is not diminished. Though we all came into being through him, through this eternal word, we often turn away. Yet he continues to reach out in love, unwavering, steady. There's no God hiding behind the God revealed in Jesus. There's no rug waiting to be pulled out on us. The God we see in Jesus, who cares for the poor, the outcast and the stranger, who heals the sick and preaches justice and love and mercy and the kingdom of God come near, that is the real deal. This is the trustworthy God that Jesus makes known. And the purpose of this knowing, this knowledge, is not for its own sake. Not so that we have the right answers in our head for a pop quiz that's never actually going to come. But the purpose of this knowledge of who God is, is to lead us to relationship with God. John says that those who receive the word, who believe on the name of Jesus, are given power to become children of God. The Son is close to the Father's heart, and by faith he invites us to stand with him in that place of intimacy with God. Jesus shows us a human life made utterly transparent to God, lived in God's spirit without static interruptions, no gaps full of grace and truth. He is the most human human being. And from that fullness, we have all received. As the letter to the Galatians says, because the Son takes on humanity, takes up flesh and blood to live among us, we receive adoption as God's children. 
God sends the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. And we are drawn to live from the same closeness with God from which Jesus lived. This sort of belief or faith is far more than cognitively accepting an abstract statement as true or false. As James remarks, even the demons believe that God exists. A lively faith brings us into intimate, trusting relationship with God. Drawn into Jesus' life by the Spirit, in him we too now live close to God's own heart. And this is indeed where we have always been. Remember, all things came into being through him. We are inseparably connected to God by the fact of our creation. Christ is the source of our being, the true light that enlightens our understanding. As St. Augustine prayed, you are in me deeper than I am in me. We belong to God. We always have. And so to believe on his name is an invitation to trust and to intimate relationship, sharing in God's fullness. God, the only son, is close to the Father's heart. And we're invited into that same place of intimacy with and transparency to God. Our part, as ever, is to receive. As the carol says, let every heart prepare him room. When better, when better than Christmas to receive Jesus and believe on his name, to entrust ourselves to God, the source of our being, and accept the invitation into the life that is the light of all people. Give Jesus first place in your heart and let him live his life in you. And you will find that you live where he lives, close to God's own heart, which is in fact where we already are, have always been, but now becoming ever more transparent to God's radiant light shining through us. Yes, the babe is born in Bethlehem, but if the story is worth anything, and it is, it has to be contemporary in us. The eternal word was made flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth, and from his fullness we have all received. Celebrating Christ's incarnation this Christmas, believing on his name, we look to our own birth too, born of God, adopted as children, made heirs of the divine nature, nestled close to God's own heart, where we receive grace upon grace. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm the faith of the Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has, he has spoken through the prophets. prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. The word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. We are witnesses praying. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba, Father, you have received us as your children. Make our hearts shine ever brighter with the pure light of Christ, that all people might witness your all-encompassing love. Shine forth in our lives, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty God, let all the nations witness your glory. Cause righteousness and praise to cover the earth. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Great Lord, you are mighty in power. 
You graciously make the earth to burst forth with green plants. You provide food for flocks and herds. You give us the resources to thrive on this planet. May we be thankful in our hearts and generous in our lives. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O God, it is you who establishes peace. Comfort your people with safety and security. Assure us that it is not by our own strength, but by your goodness, that we can rest in quiet confidence. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loving God, you are the healer of the brokenhearted. It is you who binds up their wounds. You lift up the lowly. Clothe your children with the garments of health and salvation, especially those on our parish prayer lists and those we name either silently or aloud. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O God, you sent your Son to redeem us from sin and death. Draw us all closer to your Son, Jesus, into your heart, both now and in the life to come. Shine forth in our lives, O Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him. You have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, remember his, his death, death we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Mark, our patron and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. the gifts of God for the people of God. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, 
Bless you this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.